Let's say you have written your awesome Python IoT application with your Raspberry Pi that will blink an LED. You feel good that it is working, but you ask yourself, how can I run this program when my Raspberry Pi starts? I asked ChatGPT to help me out on this and it gives me the systemd software suite. So, what is systemd? Systemd is an init system for many Linux distributions. This is the first and the last program run by your Linux kernel to run your services. You just need to create a text file that will tell the system what Python application to run. Then, you reload the daemon thread to read your new service and configure it to run during startup and reboot your Raspberry Pi. Once your Raspberry Pi is up, then it will automatically run your Python application. You can check if your Python application is running by querying its status. As you can see, it is says that it is active and is running my Python application. Cool, isn't it? If you want to learn more, then let's start exploring. Hi, welcome to Donsky Tech. In this video, I am going to discuss about how you can run your Python application or your Python web application when your Raspberry Pi starts or reboots. This video is in response to the several questions that I have received regarding the last video or the last project that I have created regarding the DHT Weather Station dashboard and how I could automatically start this application when my Raspberry Pi reboots or restarts. When you try to Google about this particular subject about how you can start your Python application when your Raspberry Pi starts, there are several options that is being set like editing your etcrc.local and then adding your script after this one or editing your also your startup script which is the dot bash rc so the dot bash rc is the script that is being run when you log in into your raspberry pi system or there is also the other option such as adding the cron tab, adding a job in the cron tab. So in this cron tab, what you're going to do is you're going to put the schedule and then run your Python application here. As you can see, the problem with this uh, three approach that I have mentioned is that uh, you're going to edit some system file and then the problem there is that if something goes wrong into your Python application, then it might affect how you log in or how you can communicate with your Raspberry Pi. That's why the approach that I have been using for some time is using the systemd init system. So a systemd init system is basically the first program and the last program that is being run by your Linux kernel. So, some of the popular Linux distribution is shifting into this uh, systemd init system uh, because of its uh, uh, features and the simplicity on how you can run your project. As you can see, I have here a simple project called the LED Blink. So, the LED Blink is just uh, a simple program that will just blink our Raspberry Pi attached to an LED pin which is pin 11 of, uh, on our board, GBIO board. And if you wanted to add this Python script in the startup of your Raspberry Pi, then all you have to do is just create a service file in this particular directory. So I just clear everything. And then you just go into this slash etc, systemd system. And oops, let's just list it there. And then, as you can see, what you need to do is just create a service here, a file called ledblink.service. And if we try to see what is inside this ledblink service, then you would notice that what I'm doing here is that this is basically just a text file with several sections like this one, the unit service and the install. In the unit section, you will see that the description here is that it is a Blink LED application. And in the service section, you will see that I have created a user here, which is the Pi. 
and the working directory where it will start. Right now, I have configured it to be in Home Pi Projects LED Blink. And the application that will start is Python. And then the file that I have here is the blink.py. You can also configure some of the dependencies here in your unit file. So if you want the service to run after all of the network is up, then you can configure it here in the unit section. Or you can restart it when it encounters an error. So there is an always here. And there are other setup like this one during the install, which is the multi-user dash target. The documentation for the system D is quite uh, easy to follow. So just take a look at the documentation regarding the several options. But for now, the important thing to look back here is this one, which is the exec start python blink.py. So once you have defined your uh, service file in here, the next thing that you would do is just tell it to the daemon thread to reload the project. So right now, you can uh, execute sudo systemctl daemon reload. And then what it does is that it, it will check if there's a new service that was added or created. And then once the daemon reload is done, then you can start the project that you have by executing this command, which is called sudo systemctl, and then start, and then led-blink.service, which is the name of our uh, service file. But right now, it has already started, so uh, what I can do is you can check the status first. So right now, if we click this one, oops, it should be sudo systemctl status led blink that service and as you can see it is actively running and the command that i have uh, uh, told it to do is to run this code which is the python blink.py so basically that's how you can configure your project to run uh, this particular python application and if you wanted to have this project run when your uh, Raspberry Pi is, uh, is rebooted or restarted, then the command is basically the same, sudo systemctl enable LED blink that service. So what happens is that when, once you execute this command, then your application or your Python application will be automatically started when your Raspberry Pi starts. That's actually how easy it is to use the system D. Uh, the interesting project that I would like to show you is the other one regarding how you can run a Python application that uses the Plus web framework and, use it, and also uses the virtual environment feature of your Python program. So let's go back into the original here. And I have created here a service file called the DHT weather station that service. So let's go and then nano and then put it here. And then let's check what I have done in here. And as you can see, it follows the same principle. There is a unit here, the service and the install. So the description there is that it is an DHT22 IoT weather station. The thing that you would notice in here is that I have a working directory defined also in here. And the exec start, as you can see, there is a pull path. And in the pull path, there is what we call as the .bnb. The .bnb is what we call as my virtual environment. And inside the virtual environment, I have created this Gunicorn or the HTTP server is what I have used instead of the Plus development server. So instead of running Plus and then run and then I'm using this uh, Gunicorn or Gunicorn and then I put the port into 5000 and the number of threads into 2. And then this is the application, which is app.app. .app. So if you try to go into this particular directory, uh, what, we'll, what we're going to see is that uh, we would see this .bnb, virtual environment, and then it will just automatically run the G-Unicorn. 
So basically, when you're uh, trying to run a Blast web application or any application that uses the virtual environment, make sure that you put the .bnb or the, let's go into the, that folder. Oops, let's go, let's go up and then cd the ht 22 okay uh, you would notice here that there is a dot bnb this is my virtual environment and in that virtual environment what you can do is that you can check the bin folder and you would notice that it contains the executable called the unicorn or unicorn and this is the executable that you wanted to run when your application runs or if you wanted to use the plus development server then you can use also this plus and as you can see once you have configured your uh, service file for your web application, it follows the same principle that I have used. So, if we try to check the status of our weather station service, right, like this one, then you would notice that it is actively running. So, right now, this is the status which is active and these are the different uh, logs that I have received from this particular service. If you wanted to check the logs from your service, there is a utility command called journal ctl and then just dash u and then let's just type the service that we have. And as you can see, these are the last logs that I have from my web application. So, it's actually easy to use or run your Python application using the system D in its system. The code for this project, including the DHT weather station, is available in the description of this video. Also, the detailed write-up for this video is available also. Uh, you can see it in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!